This is a fantastic book, uh, and I say that with uh, absolute conviction. This is not just because I uh, ran into a, a fairly formidable critic uh, some months ago before I'd read it. Mrs. Reagan, uh, Ron's mother, told me how good it was, and she understated the case. This is a, a remarkable achievement. Here's Ron. His children, if they were being honest, would agree that he was as strange a fellow as any of us had ever met. Not darkly strange, mind you. In fact, he was so naturally sunny, so utterly without guile, so devoid of cynicism or pettiness as to create for himself a whole new category of strangeness. <laughs> Explain. Well, he did often seem as if he came from a another planet. We were conscious, all of us, that he had this sort of inner core, which I metaphorically refer to as his 10%, uh, as opposed to the 90% that all of us saw and all of us knew, and, and was the same at home as it was uh, in public. But there was this reserved core to him, and that was really what I, I went looking for. And that was where I think the strangeness mostly resided. He was just a very private guy and full of paradoxes. I mean, this is, this is a very warm and affable man. I mean, you couldn't be in a room with him and not like him, whatever your politics might have been. But at the same time, he didn't really make friends easily. Now, when did you become aware of the strangeness? Uh, because I grew up with it, I don't have a kind of first memory of, of thinking he's strange. I think <laughs> just, uh, just a, a growing appreciation that he's somewhat unlike other dads. You know, as a little kid, you're, you're sort of ranking dads. You know, you go out to your friend's house, and the, the question is, well, did that dad come out and play football with us, or did he not? And my dad always was, even when he was busy. Uh, you know, I'd find him working in the, on the weekends uh, when he was governor of California. And he'd be there at his desk at home, and I'd be playing a football game outside in the front lawn, and we'd be a man short. Well, I knew where I could find another man. And I'd go in there, and I'd say, Dad, Dad, and I'd be throwing the football. You know, Dad, Dad, and my mother would shoo me away. Come on, Dad, he's got work to do. He can't do this now. But I'd be, you know, I'd pass by the window with the football, a lot of time. And I knew that within a half an hour or so, he'd be out there. He, he insisted, though, that he had to quarterback for both teams. That was his position. <laughs> he had to be the quarterback, and he'd play for both teams. I'm going to do something unpleasant to you. Uh, read the following. Oh, God. <laughs> what are you doing to me? I can't me? see anymore. You can't see anymore? I can't see anymore. Oh, I, oh, you're gonna, I can't read this yes, without, no, I can't read it without well, that's crying. why I want you to do it. Well, oh, okay, what do you mean, like <laughs> no, Barbara no, no. Walters? No, 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 you no, read, read it. No, read. No, read, I can't, no, I can't, literally, read. I could not read this without, really? without yes, without All right. tearing up, and I don't want to, like, blubber it. All right, I, may I? I'm, I'm serious, may I? I? You can, you can. All right. I, this I, is I a have... remarkable passage, this is the president's deathbed. His eyes found the face of the woman who, for more than half a century, had formed the core of his private world. I love you, honey, I love you, was all she could say, was all she needed to say. Sometimes eternity is compressed into an instant. The celestial wheel seems to catch and hold, but only for an instant. The blue flame guttered and extinguished, his eyes dimmed. With a quiet exhalation, my father settled back onto his pillow and died. The doctor looked down at his watch and then to the nurse. Time of death, 1 p.m. 1 p.m., she nodded. Ninety-three years and then some since a February blizzard blew over the plains of northern Illinois, leaving the air clear and the black sky hung with frozen diamonds above a sleeping town, Tampico, buried in the drifts. What is the sound echoing across the untracked snow in the hour before first light? Who is that newborn baby crying? On the east side of Main Street, above the bakery, a single window is illuminated. There a story begins. Here in a hillside home beneath Los Angeles' buttermilk haze, it ends. The peerless lifeguard of Lowell Park, Eureka's, Eureka College's finest swimmer and most dedicated gridiron fanatic, undaunted diver, intrepid wanderer of field and wood, solitary spinner of daydreams from attic relics, spreader of Dixon's spirit and lifelong seeker of a mythic shining city, Dutch to his father, dad to his kids, Ronnie to his wife and his friends, but forever his mother's perfectly wonderful Ronald. The storyteller has gone home. His story, though, lives on. Ron Reagan.